Welcome to the weekly roundup Division 3, Wayne, where I think we're going to start off at Flinders Park, aren't we? Oh, I think we are, Tom, and it was Flinders Park, 16 12 defeating Walkerville, 8 goals, 7 55. Sounds one side, but it certainly wasn't. It was uh, Walkerville leading at quarter time, half time, and only three points down at three quarter time. But in the end, it was the quality of Flinders Park that got him over the line. No less than 11 goal scorers, so it wasn't all left to. How do you say his name? Is it Ainger? Ainger. Andy Ainger, grave danger, of course. I know you're taking the uh, extracting the Huron. The Huron. Yes, um, but um, they were too strong in the end, and eight goal to nothing last quarter. Probably, yeah, two. Good. Schwartzy was their best, along with George and Harvey. George and, is his last name. <laughs> and from Walkerville, Wallace kicked three, and it was O'Brien and Blewett in the best for the Cats. Yep, I was down at uh, Walkerville Oval on Sunday as well, having a look. So, yep. done nice things for their change rooms and club rooms and all that. So, uh, Walkies, uh, look. They're not having the best year under the weed, but uh, hopefully, look, they're it certainly might take good you, signs. It might take you 12 months to sort it out there, and um, hopefully, you yeah, know, they can rebuild. Now, last week, Wayne, during It's Our Shout Out, you weren't here last week, were you? No, I wasn't. Much. I gave a bunch of prizes to Mitchum, hoping to lift their spirits and maybe get them over the line. How did it result? Uh, it didn't do very well at all, mate. Yeah. It was Golden Grove 24 23, 167 to Mitchum, 6 goals, 11 47. 120 point loss there, uh, but the Hardy boy, Jeff Hardy, kicked three. Wills was their best player for Golden Grove, mate. Uh, Bamford, Fair spread. Bamford, Oliver, Horskins, all kicking four. Morris and Graham and Ingram in the best, mate, for the Cookerbarrows. Bamford, Oliver, Horskins. Sounds like a British actor. <laughs> See him smoking his pipe and he's everything. Hey, kicked four today. <laughs> Oh, oh, jolly old chat. <laughs> trottle, trottle, trottle. Anyway, we're just having a good time here on the weekly roundup. And Westminster and Portland, it was a thriller. It was, it was a bit quite, of a thriller. It was anyway. close, yeah. Nine, nine, we thought nine it points, and it was Westminster, nine goals, 14 68. Defeating Portland, eight goals, 11 59. Portland, though, their Achilles heel, they're, they play good football, but they can't sustain it. They're up 6 6 to 1 8 at half time. You should be able to close out Down the game. Down by a point at three quarter time, yeah. and yeah. Just, just nothing in the second half. And, and that's not the first time or the second time they've blown. A lead. It's the fourth time. Either that or he wants four beers to produce it. It's the fourth time. So there, yep. Nonetheless, uh, for Westminster, it was Newman and and Blessing both kicking three. Blessing was named their best. And for Portland, Traeger kicking three. Rowe and Evans in the best for Portland. Yep. Let's move on to the team that can't take a trick in Smosh West Lakes. Um, Aiden Parham can take a trick though. He won one of our awards this week. And uh, no Kawinki Ding is he in the best players. He isn't. His brother Lyndon is. But Cohen Matna kicked three. I'll give you the score. 10 9 69 Smosh West Lakes. Uh, no match receipt in the endless. 15 12 102. But it was only two goals of difference at three quarter time, so they're certainly in the mix. A lot of games a lot of games this week has been pretty close at three quarter time, and then the dominant side just seems to run over the top of them. But this was probably a lot closer than I thought it would have been. Yeah. Um, for Seaton, Harlan, and Harlan kicked four, Tremaine went wild with two, and Tonka with two. Jasper's, Tremaine, and Walsh in the best. Is it Harlan's first year um, at Seaton? Second year? Second He's year. been a bit of a load trotter, Harlan, hasn't he? Hills. 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 Harlan. Harlan Glowtrotter. Oh my god. Okay, kick four. <laughs> just, just give it all. They're cringing in the studio audience of three. Yeah. Oh, no. No good that one. No, no good that one. Harlan Glowtrotter, think of it. Um, <laughs> mate, I'm not thinking of the best. You are a little Washington general. Right. Okay, let's get on to game of the round, mate. Yep. It was an absolute thriller. It was Plimpton and Brighton. Again, Brighton looked untouchable and they shot out. I've actually spoken to Plimpton today because I was pretty excited to hear about this. Uh, they shot out four goals to nothing, Brighton, and it was like. Uh oh, uh oh. Um, but they got him in the end, Plimpton. 13 6 84. Brighton Bombers 12 6 78. The siren went, it was full time, and scores were locked away. Plimpton had a shot from 48 metres out. Jeez, they gave me his name. They gave me his name. Ah, it's got to be him, is it? Let me check. Luke Percy. They call him Puss. Um, oh, Puss, Puss Percy. Percy. He's never kicked a ball more than 35 minutes in his life. I'm couldn't told kick it over Puss. a jam gin. Mate, he couldn't kick his dog in a fight. Um, he, not that he should kick dogs, 48 <laughs> metres out. Basically, the, the game, it was going to be a draw. Percy has got on to a monster. Drop punt too. Yep. And it's gone through, through the high diddle diddle. Up Walker celebrations at Plimpton Oval here. The Red Dogs up and about. They've knocked off top spot. And um, and as we said, they're a real smoky, uh, this this group. They're, they're in the five now, four and three. Um, the games they've lost have been close games. But um, talking about the game itself, Nolsey, I, said, I actually said, tell me a bit about Brighton, why they're so good. So they are playing the 18-man press. Yep. Um, they've got 
a young fellow sits out the back. Normally he's very good as the 18th man. W Rivers, what's his name again? William Rivers. So Will Rivers sits as that last man. He, he generally takes the big tool, but the big tool this week was, I think it was Smith, was it? Jim Smith. Yep. Actually got a bit of a hold of him and was able to take some clunks and big marks. Kick three. Um, and yeah, so good strong effort. Tabner in Ruck, uh, what's his name? Stewie Tabner was also very good. Um, and great news for Plimpton as well. You know they take the snapshot and you can win the carton? Yes. Daniel Herbert, Herbzilla, has been snapped by the Adelaide Footy League photographer. So get on and vote for him. And that's just cost you a carton, Herbie, so you'll be donating that right back to the club. Um, the other one, he wasn't named best, but this is the great thing about speaking to people from the club. Adrian Tan yep. plays... He's, he's got an A-10. A-10. <laughs> he does have an A-10, actually. Yep. Um, he was actually best player. Um, named fifth in here but and on the paper, but he played a half well, So I put the wrong way. That's... The Normally the way. Yep. Sneak push Percy of kicking the winning goal. Yeah, uh, Timmy Duck is in there as well, of course. Actually, it's all the people I've known in the best place, so it makes sense. But Tanny off half back, giving run, um, got working off his man and uh, you know, pushing it through the forward line. Great effort. For the Brighton Bombers, mate? No, uh, Ray and Irons kicking three. Ray and Venning and McRae in the best there for the Bombers. Tied away three quarter time. This would have been a classic walk. Uh, it was oh, I took the dog for a walk actually Saturday morning and they had everything set up nice and early. It was, um, yeah. They were up and about early. Clinton were ready to go. Yeah, they play some school for you for the, the Glenelg Schools Comp there as well. They're a great club for Clinton and deserve the win. And um, look, do you subscribe? I don't want to get too much into this. Do you subscribe to the loss they had to have type theory? No, I don't. I know the producers, he loves this kind of stuff. And when he was on with me the other week, he's saying every side only wins six or so games and then they've got to drop one. No, I don't. Only because we're undefeated. I suppose that's probably one of the things I'm worried about. But, um, no, I don't think so. I just think maybe they just didn't come really switched on maybe on Saturday. And well, they started well, but they, started they were well, challenged and didn't find, didn't, didn't have a plan B maybe. Didn't get into, into second or third year, I think so. But they'll, yeah, they'll bounce back this day. Really interesting ladder. There's six teams vying for the top five spots. So Brighton, Flinders Park, Seaton, all six and one. Um, and then Golden Grove, Plimpton, Westminster, all four and three. All six teams definitely would have late September claims. Then it drops off to Walkerville and Portland for mine and Mitcham and Smoshworth Lakes. Yep. You're going to do four next year. Pretty simple, isn't it? Mm. Yep. yep. This week's round, uh, this week's game, sorry, we've got uh, Brighton at home to Portland. Sorry, Portland, but um, yeah, Brighton will be angry and they'll, they'll be angry and they'll come back and mm-hmm. win by 10 goals. Mm-hmm. Uh, after Harpers Field, Golden Grove and Flinders Park. I'm not sure if uh, Golden Grove are going to have a matchup for Ainga, or yep. Inger as you call him. Yep. Um, and he should probably kick a bag, and there's plenty of other talent floating around at Flinders Park too. Flinders, Flinders Park for me as well. Yep. Uh, Another poor club that's probably going to... Struggling club that's probably going to continue to struggle this week. And it's out of Peddler Reserve, Seaton versus Mitchell. Yeah, Seaton will be too strong. Uh, the work that Matty Webber's done over the last couple of years getting that squad up and about. Yep. They're, uh, now they're a force. And uh, yeah, looking good. And Walkerville at home this week to Plimpton. Cats versus Dog. Who'd win a fight between a cat and a dog? Well, a dog. Dog. Win. Yeah, yes, not uh, unless you kick it. <laughs> um, don't want to get ahead of themselves, and, but Walkerville probably just not enough uh, forward line contributors. I know Dusty Fromm's uh, having a reasonably consistent year, but uh, yeah, plenty of too many winners. Yep. And last and especially not least, it is Westlake's Shore Oval. It's Smosh Westlake versus Westminster Old Scholars. I can't see Smosh Things Westlake's having three get matchups better. for the three ex Sample players that play for Westminster. Yep. We mention all the time Westminster should win. They don't knock teams off. Uh, they don't smash them, but they'll, they'll do enough to get the chops. Which is Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week. See you guys.